Hey guys, welcome to the Wealth Wisdom Financial YouTube channel and podcast. I am doing again, of course, more interviews with amazing people. And the fun thing is I get to learn all kinds of crazy stuff while I get to share it with you guys. And um, this is really exciting because, you know, we're in the real estate world. We talk about real estate often. We're early stage in that, you know, like we, we got our home and some other things and going into some real estate ventures, uh, conversations, we're just learning how infinite banking and this concept makes sense. Today, I got an amazing guest. His name is Ian Epel Apolti. I probably said that really bad, um, but he is an American serial entrepreneur and the founder of numerous tech companies. So, you know, we love working with serial entrepreneurs being one myself. He's best known for the founder of VWork, uh, online portal for outsourcing computer virtual work projects. But I'm not really talking about tech stuff. We're not going into that. Uh, he's been more recently doing stuff with alternative investing. So he has a uh, private investor club with 5,600 members and over 12.8 billion with a B in investable assets. That's, that's pretty big. He's a creator and editor of the Real Estate Crowdfunding Review, uh, something you guys should check out. Uh, as seen on USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg News, Realtor, CoStar, all kinds of other fun stuff, news. Uh, and he's, uh, again, that serial entrepreneur. So Ian is going to bring some value here. And you guys are not going to want to miss the amazing stuff that he's going to bring to you. Hey, Brandon. Nice to be on the show. Thank you. Hey, thanks. And I totally uh, messed up your name. So how do you say your last name? That's okay. A lot of people do. It's Ippolito. It's an Italian name and it's long and it's got lots of syllables, but that's what it is. Yeah, I was like, I am not sure. <laughs> people misspell my name all the time too, or, or not, they say it wrong, but I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. So, so you were in tech, the tech world, and yeah. I guess you started in tech. Are you still in the tech world or what? How's Not that? really. No, no. I, th that is how I started. I mean, it, yeah. basically, you know, I, I went to school for computer science. And so okay. I, I started, you know, and um, what was in the programming world. But you know what? I, I started off working for other people. And, you know, hey, getting out of college and, you know, getting a paycheck, all that stuff was good. But the thing that I didn't like was, you know, people wouldn't listen to my ideas because, you know, I'm the new guy or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, a lot of times I'd go into these companies and I'd be like, gosh, why are they doing this? Or why is, you know, we could change this. It'd be so much better. People, a lot of times they didn't want to hear it. They, uh, you know, there's a lot of politics and stuff like that. So it was very frustrating, you know, kind mm -hmm. of doing that. And I said, you know what I want to do? I want to be my own boss. So the way I first kind of tried that was to be a computer consultant. So I became a computer consultant, started working for all these other companies. And it was definitely a step up because now instead of the, employee that nobody listened to. Now I'm the, I'm the same person, but you know, the highly paid consultant who now everyone is going to listen to. So, so that was fun. You know, that, that yeah. was nice. But, I felt like having that consultant, like being a coffee shop owner, uh, it was really hard sometimes because mm -hmm. they're, you know, what you should do and you need to actually implement it and you pay them. So you actually have to do what they say because you pay them <laughs> yes. a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that, that is so true. There's a lot of pressure there when you pay, pay someone that much. So yeah, so, so it was good, but it still wasn't quite, you know, I was like, you know what? I, I, it's not really this, quite the same as being your own boss. You're not setting your own hours, you know, you still have a boss. So, you know, I, always in the back of my mind, I wanted to create my own business and I was always just kind of looking, you know, what would be an opportunity. And I, I kind of found it, you know, doing, doing that job. And I kind of, I created my first company, which was a software company. Yeah. And it was creating this, you know, desktop software. Um, and what's interesting is that very first company did not do well. It was, uh, it, it actually was a disaster. It was, um, you know, I, I spent all this time creating this software that I thought everyone was going to love. And it actually, it sold zero copies. So it's, it's, it's the worst, the worst product ever created. But, you know, I learned a lot of lessons from that. Yeah, and yeah. 
I learned so much. I was like, oh, I didn't learn. I didn't research my market. I didn't, you know, do all these things. Eventually learned, oh, you know what? I, I need to do these things. I tried again and I created a second product. And, and all of a sudden the second one did a lot better. I created this, this thing called Helpmaker Plus, which allowed, back then it was difficult to create these things called help files. So yeah, this yeah. tool let people do it really quickly. And it was awesome because I wrote the software one time and I would just get checks in the mail. It's like, you know, write it once. And every month I would, actually it was every week I would open up my mailbox and there'd be more checks, more, more people signing up for my software. So it was really awesome. And, you know, it started growing. I, started, I learned, oh, how do I advertise it? I learned about doing that. And eventually I was, oh, I had enough to buy, to pay for a car. So I bought a car. I was really excited about that. And uh, it just kept growing and growing until one day, I think it was probably about two and a half years in, uh, the elephant kind of stomped on me. And the, uh, the elephant was Microsoft. Microsoft said, you know what? We need to create something to let people create help files. So I was like, oh, great. They, they basically wiped out my product, you know, mm. overnight. So had to start again, basically. And wow. uh, yeah, yeah. That, that happens a lot nowadays with the Amazon. People who like create different products and things like that, I, I see. And then Amazon, they sell their stuff on Amazon, right? And then Amazon's yes. like, oh, this is awesome. Uh, they're making a lot of good sales. We'll create a knockoff. Yes. And then, then they, the other person who started lo loses. Or in the Apple store, it happens all the yeah. time. You create a great app and yeah. Apple's like, yeah, we're going to integrate that into the uh, operating system. So it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely I a think, huge risk. I think that's, that's uh, interesting. And just even sharing that with our audience, one of the things I love about uh, business owners and, and people who have actually done it is you, you just said your first business was a total flop. Yeah, right? for sure. Your second business, not so much a flop, but then somebody came in and, you know, things changed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and what I love about business owners is they have some arrows in their back, right? They've actually done a few things mm -hmm. and they can speak from it. I, I call some, some people, they're entrepreneurs. Oh yeah. Right. They, they right. want to start a business. You probably hear this in, in the real estate world where they, they're eventually going to do a deal. Yes. Um, yes. And you, you know, the ones that are the real deals makers. Yes. And the ones that are not. The so tire you, pickers or. Yeah. Tire yeah. pickers. Mm -hmm. How do you figure out as you build your programs? Mm hmm and how do you find the right people to mentor and educate? And how do you disqualify people at the same time? Oh, you, so as far as like mentoring people and stuff like that? Well, maybe um, mentoring you know, or, or you're, you're doing a lot in real estate now. Yeah, I'm so. doing real estate too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, I guess I can answer both. You know, it's like with the mentorship thing, it's like, you know, when people approach me, I'm like, hey, you know, let, let's talk. And uh, I think pretty quickly, both sides can kind of realize, you know, if it's going to work or not. When, when it comes to real estate, so I'm not doing deals. I didn't get to, you know, what, what the private investor club is, but basically it's a, and maybe I could explain it since to make this answer sound, you know, yeah. understandable. <laughs> so basically what, you know, I did the whole entrepreneurship thing. I actually created a whole other business that, that the third one did very well. So I, I exited from the third one, which was the V worker rent a coder one. And I was retired. It was that good. So, um, wow. Yeah. So I you don't seem old enough to retire. I thought, I thought you had to be 59 and a half before you. Died. I know. Right. Huh? I, I, I don't feel old enough because it's like when I was retiring, retired, I was bored. I was like, yeah, right? for the first month or two, it was awesome. Cause it was like yeah. nothing to do, no pressure. And then after that, it was like, there's nothing, to, there was nothing to wake up it's for and nothing to be excited depression. about. And it's actually not really fun for me anyway. I'm sure some people would love it. So basically, I, but my new job basically was how do I invest this money now? Because I'm no longer an entrepreneur, I'm an investor. And um, at the time, basically this new thing had come out called real estate crowdfunding. I didn't want to just put all my money in the stock, like the traditional advice, put, put X percent in stocks, X percent in bonds, and you're done. And I was yeah. like, well, there's so many other things out there. You know, there's real estate. And so the real estate crowdfunding had come out and there were probably a hundred different sites where I could go and look at all these real estate deals. But they all were saying, oh, we're awesome. And, you know, we, we're, we're the best. And the other ones are, are terrible. And it's like, how do you know? 
So I took a couple months and I actually, I hired an assistant and we went in and we analyzed all these sites. We interviewed investors that had gone through them and just to find out where to put my own money. And um, so it, it was very useful for me. And the word kind of got out, hey, Ian has done all this research. You need to ask Ian to get a copy of his research. So I started getting all these emails and it became too much. I was like, oh gosh, another person asking for my research. So I said, you know what, I'll do, I'll, I'll just put it on the internet. Look, go out to the internet. It's now on this website, the real estate crowdfunding review.com. And that's how that site started. And it's still the same thing today. It's just a free resource where people see, you know, this analysis of these real estate deals that are out there. It gets now about 12,000 investors coming in every month. And wow. yeah, yeah. So it's just, a, it's just an awesome place to kind of discuss all that. But even then it wasn't quite enough because it was, I really wanted a place because a public, it's a public website, right? You can only discuss so much in the public. I was like, I really need like a private space. A lot of these deals have a non-disclosure. So you're not allowed to talk about them in public. Yeah. So I knew I really need like a private space where we can talk about any deal that we want. And I want to kind of cooperate with other people. You know, maybe I know how to do due diligence in self-storage and someone else knows multifamily and someone else knows offices, you know, and together, you know, we can, we can do really good due diligence together. And we can source deals so we can find stuff. Maybe I don't know about it, but the other person's going to. And, and maybe we can bring together enough money where we can get a special deal from the sponsor where I couldn't get that myself because I'm bringing a small amount of money. So that's basically yeah. what the club is all about. And it started off small, just spread through word of mouth. But like you said, it's over, it's actually over like 5,600 members now, I think, and 10.8 billion in investable assets. And that's what we do. That, that's what the club is all about. Well, and, and it sounds like one, you reverse engineered everything. You probably used your technology background uh -huh. and reverse engineered this, this thing of saying, well, what do I want to do? Do the data analysis, right? Does that mm -hmm. sound about right? And then yeah, you, that, that's exactly right. Because it was missing. You, I was like, I need this. Yeah. <laughs> and you accidentally created the thing because you were like, hmm, this is. This is what I'm doing, what I'm learning, and there's a gap here, and and I'm skilled in this, and it also will help me know what to do with my own money, mm -hmm. and that seemed like that's how that kind of just bubbled, right? Is that sound yeah. about right? Yeah, that's exactly it. It was it was purely by accident, and I just kind of noticed it was like, hey, this is not working, and I'd like it to work, and just kind of bubbled up from there. Yeah. Well, I want to show guys uh, the everybody on the video here, and if you're catching it on the YouTube or on the podcast, uh, you can go to the Real Estate Crowdfunding Review dot com. Uh, so, walk us through this website. What are people going to sure. find? In the sure. Game? So, so you see, I mean, I think probably the most popular things are those ratings and reviews. So basically, okay. there are. So, or you could even click on the, yeah, the top 100 plus sites reviewed and ranked. And basically what it is, is everyone, you know, usually they come to the site because they're interested. They found a particular site. They're like, is this site any good is really what they're yeah. asking. And they want to know what other investors say. And of course you can't get it from the site itself because they're just going to tell you all the great stuff about themselves. Right. So this here is a summary and you can see, you know, oh, actually, yeah. So it took me three months back in 2015 to create this, but it's updated yeah. Constantly, and actually, I just came out with an update of these uh, these people. There's no one that makes best of the best, which is ten out of ten stars. Yeah, a couple that qualified for all stars, which is seven out of nine. But basically, you know, there's a bunch of criteria for each one. You know, how do they they get to these different tiers? Contenders yeah. is the next tier, six out of ten. Now there's a hundred sites, and you can see these are very small numbers here on these upper yeah. tiers. So you know, um, in the past there were more, but a lot have gone out of business or yep. have had problems or investors start complaining. The other thing is at the beginning, they could seem good, but investors start actually putting in money into deals. And after a while, if they have problems, they fall down the rankings. Yeah. So this is kind of a BS detector that you've created for some of this real estate craziness. Cause, yeah. cause I feel like sometimes in, in real estate, you know, again, you have the entrepreneurs, the people who, who say they're going to be entrepreneurs or, or the real estate guys who eventually do a deal. And there's some people that do things that are not ethical or uh, they're shady. Mm -hmm. you've, you've kind of 
found that out and are able to put the top ones here. I think that's amazing to be able to, as I'm thinking about investing and doing more of that, well, where do I go to find out if yeah. they, if I'm working with somebody, they might be slick having a, a great uh, pitch deck or whatever, um, but we really don't know what's under the hood. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly it. And that's the problem that I, I was in and made me want to kind of do all this research to find it out. And in the end, it's usually the investors, the investors who are in there that they know. Yeah. And uh, if they're unhappy, they'll, they'll talk about it. So I have a, a personal story. I, mm -hmm. I bought my property here. It was a mm -hmm. flip. And this is probably just uh, not, I wasn't very smart or I don't know, who knows. But uh, it was a flip. I wanted a finished basement. And uh, we've had a couple floods since we've moved in. And mm -hmm. come to find out, the flippers covered up a drain in the basement. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And it was covered with plaster. And then there was like uh, flooring there. Oh, and wow. like, how would I have known? And and like not knowing like, okay, this flipper or that, uh, I don't know if they've done shoddy work or not. It, it's yeah. a big problem. And, you know, uh, that that's kind of an asset class that people will either, you know, um, th th they call it turnkey investing where yeah. – it's like, hey, I'm going to buy from a flipper. I'll buy a rental property from a flipper. So flipper yeah. comes in, they buy it, they rehab it, and they supposedly deliver it in good condition to the investor. Uh, but it is a problem where there's a misalignment there. The, the investor cannot tell many of the times if they've taken shortcuts, if in your case, you know, if stuff is hidden. And, yeah. you know, it, it, sometimes it can be really bad. I mean, it could be sewer problems or, you know, it, it can be stuff that's really expensive to fix and there's kind of no way. So, uh, yeah, it, what you're describing is a difficult problem. Well, and I, I'm, I'm assuming some of this is helping figure out who to work with and who not to um, as we are being a part of that, you know, because we want to make some money, too. But we also don't want to screw people over in the process. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and this is like in that BS. What other things you want to show us on the site? Um, you know what, I guess. Okay. So there's also guides and tutorials. So if you go to the next one there, so this is, this section is kind of for people who are like, well, what, what is real estate investing? And it kind yeah. of talks to you at the beginning. It says, you know, Hey, you can go to these platforms and they'll tell you how to invest in real estate. But coincidentally, it'll always, whatever they say, it's going to point you to invest in their platform, right? So it's right. like asking the car salesman, you know, how to buy a car. Yeah. So, the, you know what? And I should have added, this is a free site. There's no conflict of interest. Everything is absolutely free. And there's actually no advertising accepted on the site either. So it's not like, you know, I have an incentive to send it. It's all conflict of interest free. So that's what all this is. It's like conflict of interest free education on like hard money loan investing. You just talked about flippers. So it's like, how do I invest in those loans to those uh, flippers? Those are card, called hard money loans. You know, what, what are the things I should look for? The, the next one there is how do you invest in passive real estate without paying a penny of tax legally? There's all these great real estate is awesome for. Uh, Sounds like a 1031 or something along 1031, those 1031, defer, defer and die. Yes, that's like, it, it's great. So basically you, you purchase a property and hopefully you make a bunch of money off of it, but you don't sell it. At that point, you just do a 1031 into your next property. So you've deferred the taxes and you can repeat that over and over again. And if you die, then your heirs inherit it on a stepped up basis. So they don't pay taxes either. Yeah. You basically avoid legally paying taxes on it, you know, the entire time. So it's really, really good. Well, and uh, have you put in anything on infinite banking or, or the bank and yourself concept? On this section, no, there isn't. We talk about that in the private investor club, but yeah. I haven't written an article on the infinite banking. That might be something because it's definitely in here where you may have paid taxes on the front end and right. then never have to pay taxes again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a buy, borrow, die strategy, same idea. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And it's just an amazing... Uh, along with the 1031, it might make sense sometimes uh, to create that. Anyway, I'm sure you guys talk about it quite a bit. Yeah, um, yeah, we talk about it in the club for sure. Yeah, so so guys, you got to join the club to know the real secrets. Right? <laughs> so, so join the club and you'll hear all kinds of um, even better secrets. Like these, you could probably find it, you know, uh, everybody knows 1031 or, or a lot of people do. 
that he probably writes it in a better way and more understandable way than the tax code. Well, um, you know, and, and I should say, you know, the club is free too. So there's no conflict of interest. They're not charging people to go into the club. And again, there's, there's no advertising in the club. So it's the same sort of thing. There are the, the advantage of the club is it's not just me now, then it's just me telling people, you know, here's my yeah. great ideas. It's like 5,600 people giving out their best ideas. So, uh, you know, I'd say that's probably the biggest advantage. So where do you make your revenue then? Is it through the investing side of things or where well, well so you know I, I just set this up like i said the, the whole reason was not actually to make money it was it was a little bit to get people from not bothering me was the, the yeah. original reason i set it yeah. up and i deliberately set it up not to charge anyone because i was like you know i've seen all these other sites out there i've seen these ratings on some of these sites and i, I don't agree with them because they're trying to get someone to click the button to go through and you know and get the commission so I was like, yeah. you know, I, I don't, I don't want that. And I am a retired entrepreneur. I don't have to be doing this. So, yeah. you know, I was like, it, it's going to be free. So it, it's run very differently. I'd say than the, what people are typically used to, but hopefully it's a much better way. Cool. I mean, that's, that's really good because you don't need the revenue and people think about that. Mm -hmm. I really like, uh, just for me as a layman in this and learning and, and starting to build in. Like, how do I know what's there and to have unbiased advice, yes. right? Yes. Um, even as I do my financial, um, advising and, and all, or, you know, helping people with their, their finances, mm -hmm. um, really, I don't want to be known as I'm selling them uh, a life insurance product. I want to yes. be an educator first mm -hmm. and foremost, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. educating and helping them make the best decisions. And it sounds like uh your heart is a of an educator right yeah yeah that's really right and you know and unlike you i'm not a financial advisor i always tell people that you know hey i'm not a financial advisor and the other thing i always tell them too is like you know everybody is different it's like everyone has different financial goals everyone's got different risk tolerance everyone's got you know a different financial situation they're coming from so something i think is fantastic someone else might think it's terrible and i think they're probably right you know it's like everyone's going to kind of have their own unique look at it. So that's also a really important part of the club where I don't go in and say, oh, well, this is what you need to invest in. It needs to be this and this and this. Um, everyone presents their own point of view and and everyone really has a, their own unique way of looking at it. And so, um, yeah. you know, something that, well, that I think is great, someone could think is terrible and, that, and that's fine. And that that's the hard part as I've been in the financial services world, mm -hmm. even on the life insurance side, I'm not supposed to say I'm a financial advisor because it's all on the market, right? Oh, okay. Uh, gotcha. If you're a advisor, you do market type stuff. Right? right. And, and for me, I think more of thinking about how do we become uh, wealth creators and cash flow management. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited about, uh, being more of a cash flow management specialist. Oh, gotcha. How mm -hmm. do we help people use real estate to create more cash flow? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, as you have more cash flow, you go from I have a few deals to I want to invest in other people's deals. Uh, and then you become part of the investing club, right? Once you've <laughs> done a few deals. Right. So, so mm -hmm. how do you then lead people in the investor club world? And I'm going to move to that side. Yeah, yeah. There's another tab there. So yeah, so, you know, that, like I said, so it's like you can, we can discuss a lot of great stuff on the public web, but so much of it is covered with a non-disclosure and we just can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and as you can see there, it's like real estate is a big part of it, but it's also all these other alternative things that are just not public market. Mm -hmm. So it's not the stuff that you get from your broker, you know, so it's, a litigation finance, private debt, private equity, venture capital. So it's, you know, anything that's not public markets is discussed in the club. And so the way the club works is someone says, hey, look, I found something. You Actually, 99% of the time it's like, wow, they're not quite sure about it. They're like, I found something. Is this any good or not? And um, it looks interesting, but I'm not sure. And, you know, sadly, probably most of the time, someone will go, well, did you, did you look a little bit further? Did you, did you see this that's listed in there? Oh my gosh, look up, they're charging you there. Oh, you know, people will point out things and, and then the original person will go, oh yeah, thank you. You know, thank you for yep. saving me from making a big mistake. But, you know, a, a smaller percentage of them survive kind of going through that process. And, uh, you know, 
then people are, are able to invest. And like I said, we're not financial advisors. And so, and we don't charge money, for example, to refer people to any of these investments. That allows people to, to trust that the information they get in there is just unbiased. Yeah. Well, and, and even on some of this, finding people that are experts and have done it, at mm -hmm. least a little bit, and you could probably research a little bit on the individuals um, to, to be able to find, make sure, hey, they do know what they're talking about and doing the right things, right? Yes. Or it might um, just be, hey, does has anyone here invested in this person before? They sound interesting, but I just want to, you know, hear, did they run away with your money or did they actually yeah. do what they said? So yeah. that can be really useful. Yeah. What else would you say are pitfalls and, and things that I'm going to move this way just so we can talk uh, together without the website in the middle? Mm -hmm. um, guys, totally go to privateinvestorclub.com. Uh, join it if you are in the real estate world. I know a lot of our listeners are, uh, and a lot of our listeners are learning and growing in this. So what would you tell somebody who is new mm -hmm. in, in this sector? What would you say the first thing they should start doing or, or how would you uh, mentor them? Okay. Well, you know, as I said, you know, I, I'm not anyone's financial advisor. I can just tell you what I would do if I was, you know, in that situation. So in that situation and actually no, because I did the wrong thing with my very first investment. So, you know, the wrong thing that I did was I jumped in without understanding really what the markets were understand without understanding cycles, without having a bigger picture for my portfolio with my very first investment. And it was uh, just before the great recession. I mean, just before the great recession, like a few months before the great recession, investing in, residential properties so not a good investment not good timing terrible it's actually probably the worst yeah, yeah. you possibly yeah. could do but you know i i didn't know what i didn't know so if i were to do it all over again and, and what i do now is that first of all i learned about the asset class i wish i had learned about you know the residential market and how inflated it was at that time yeah. um I've learned about real estate cycles and I, and I have a picture of, you know, what percent do I want to invest in these different asset classes in yep. real estate? Because there's so many of them, you know, there's, there's everything there. There's multifamily, there's self-storage, yep. there's office, there's, there's mobile home parks there, you know, you name it. Um, there's medical buildings. And so triple net leases. So the first thing I think is most important, you know, for me, if I were starting over, I would go in and, just learn as much. Don't be so anxious to just throw in the money. Like, oh my gosh, the money is burning a hole in my pocket. Yeah. It's easy to do. It's like inflation is running crazy. I need to put some money into something really fast. And yeah. um, it's easy to make a mistake. So, you know, I think the best thing is just, you know, take a step back and, and figure out that portfolio. What's it going to be? What percentages are in each? Have a goal. And then only then forget, okay, this is my, my office or this is my multifamily. What am I going to put into that? And then start digging down the way I do it. I look at the sponsors first and, and everyone has a way of doing it. It's fine. You know, uh, different ways of doing it. Some people look at the deals first. I actually look at the sponsors. Um, I feel that a good sponsor can take even an okay deal and it's going to turn out fine. But, you know, a great deal with a sponsor that doesn't know what they're doing. Um, I feel they can ruin it. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't want them learning these expensive lessons. Like if it's a new sponsor, they can learn an expensive lesson with my money. So, um, so I start with the sponsor first and I really just run them through the ringer. And if they survive that, I find 99.99% of the time, the deal is great. And I actually trust them enough. Like if it's a blind pool, I, I may not even need to see the deal. I'm like, yeah. you know, it's fine. But again, everyone has their own way of doing it. Some people will look at the deal first and only then look at the sponsor. So, you know, and that's fine too. Well, and, and what you mentioned was um, like knowing the different markets. Cause I've talked to clients and, and people who come through me uh, and they're like, oh, I'm going to do real estate and I'm going to do this, this, and this. And they have all these different things. And I'm like, have you actually researched that specific way? Yes. Right? Uh -huh. And what type of investor do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Right. That's a very mm -hmm. different question than, you know, because, because here's the thing I learned. I don't want to own many, many single family homes after having this, uh, incident here in my house. Oh, right. Yes. I'm like, yes. Mm, I, I'm not gifted in handiwork. Mm -hmm. So that's just not mm -hmm. for me. So yes. what, what kind of person do I want to be? And 
as you learn, maybe it's a kind of like leveling up in a video game. You, you master a certain level, then you move mm-hmm. up instead yes. of being a master of, or trying to do all of them, you know, I don't know. Yes. I, I think that's right too. And then as far, kind of like with that idea of, you know, the easiest ones, there, there are some asset classes that are much easier to understand than the other ones. And I, you know, if I were starting over, I would start with that. Like everyone can kind of understand multifamily and apartments because, you know, everyone has probably paid rent and, and been in that situation. It gets a little bit more difficult to understand if they're trying to look at self-storage, you know, or some of these other things. And, and even office, you know, like like you understand office, you're a business person and stuff like that. But a lot of people, you know, that's a little bit more foreign to them. And, and the way I started off was kind of the same way. What do I understand? And then kind of build out from there. Yeah. So I think that's, that's amazing. Like, again, finding the right people, realizing that not all uh, real estate is the same, not all investing is the same. Yes. Um, and as we listen to people, this is why I don't like um, the Dave Ramsey kind of thing. He's like, you know, infinite banking is stupid and everybody who does it is, is crazy. Oh, right. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, it might work for certain things or, mm-hmm. or it, it's a different uh, way of thinking as, as somebody who wants to do business property or, or any of that. It's a different skill set, maybe. Yes, yes, exactly. And that kind of goes back to kind of what I was saying before. It's like, it really is impossible to tell someone, oh, that's a that's a dumb investment. Or I feel, you know, oh, that, that that's a bad investment because it's probably right for somebody, you know. I mean, if it's a scam, obviously that, that's a yeah, bad yeah. investment. But, you know, if it's a legitimate investment. It's probably right for somebody in, in some sort of situation. So, yeah, I, I try never to come out and go, oh, that, that that's a bad investment. Or, and also to say that's a good investment, too, because, you know, yeah. something I think is great. Someone's probably going to think is not so great. And that's fine. Well, I think that's good to, to mm-hmm. then know and be humble in saying, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, and as I work again with clients saying, this is what I think, but mm-hmm. you could think differently. Here's where I might uh, think about certain areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do also look at sometimes just understanding your numbers. The numbers will speak for it. If you don't know the numbers, Yes, maybe a bad deal altogether because you didn't even do your research. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I think that's actually a common mistake that a lot of uh, new investors make and that I see too, where they kind of fall in love with the story of the deal. So it's like, wow, this is a great section of that town. And they see the concept drawings or whatever it is. They fall in love with something of it and they don't look at the numbers. And and a lot of times they don't understand how to look at the numbers. So Mm. all they can do is kind of look at the story. And uh Sometimes it can work, but a lot of people have lost money that way. Yeah. So I, it's, I don't think it's a good way to go about things. Yeah. And then sometimes even uh, as business owners, knowing when to walk away. Uh, yes, that's true. From, from your deal, it might be like from for us as business owners, it's kind of like a baby, right? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. a baby and, and you've created it and you're like, all right, I'm selling this, which is we did with our coffee shop. And, and it was hard, right? Yes. Same same kind of thing is probably in real estate where you've put a lot into it. We know something's wrong. You might have gotten red flags, but um, we we still want to like think the best, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And then we end up in a bad, worse position. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is awesome, Ian. I'm really uh, glad we were able to make this time. Uh, and I think you uh, provide a lot of value to our listeners, because again, we work with a lot of real estate people who are, are getting in or have been in for a long time. Great. How would you like people to interact with you or, or learn more from you? What What's the best way for them to connect with you? I think we know, but you know. <laughs> yeah, the best way is to go to privateinvestorclub.com. Um, that's one way. There's also a, a link there to my LinkedIn page, for example. That's another way to do it. Yep, there it is, privateinvestorclub.com. And if someone thinks that they would like to join it, there's a, yep, there you go, how to join. So there's information there on on everything. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm going to join it. So Great. if you go there, you'll, you'll see me, guys. So I'm going to be there and I'm learning. I'm, I'm in the early stages of my investing career. I believe in, in real estate is where we're going to be at. And the, the other thing I want to leave you guys with is, 
don't um, minimize the small beginnings of what you're creating, right? You might have a business that doesn't go so well, but it's a learning experience. You might have yes. um, a business because you learn from the failure, you're able to create a success and then, you know, help others in, in investing themselves like Ian's doing. So um, with all that being said, thanks, Ian, for joining us, dropping so much value here. Um, and I am excited to release this. You guys, don't forget, like, subscribe, um, put a little comment here and tell Ian how amazing he is uh, here in the show. And then he's going to share it with all of his friends. So cool. All right. Sounds well, thanks great. again. And we will talk to you later. All right. Pleasure being here. Thanks, Brandon. Awesome.